Hello all, and welcome back to what is arguably the best looking cassette deck in my entire collection so far, the Pioneer CTF-900. I promised you guys I would uh, get back to this as soon as possible, and here it is today. I've got parts in, hopefully we're going to get this uh, play mode issue fixed today. But uh, just before we get into this properly, I just wanted to mention that I really appreciate all you guys for blowing up that first video on this particular tape deck. Honestly, it's almost the best performing video I've ever done on my channel, so I really appreciate that. Thanks for helping me out with that. Anyhow, before we get any further into this, I guess, what I should mention is that uh, because of the age of this tape deck and also because of the age of the uh, Nakamichi 480 on the shelf that's due to be my 1,000 subscriber special, tape decks like this you're not going to get right in just one video. There's just too much to go through with these things. So it's going to be one video as we go along over the next several weeks and months before we can get this thing right. So the first video was obviously checking it out, unboxing, seeing what we had here. And uh, this video will be hopefully fixing the uh, play mode issue. And the video after this will probably be, oh, let's see, what's next? Either real motor service or transport service. Possibly I'll shoot both at the same time. One for one week and one for the next week after that or something like that. I don't know. And then... We'll just keep going like that. As we find issues, we'll fix them. And hopefully one of these days we'll get this thing working right to, to record on because uh, I have taken my brand new microscope thingama thingamadoodle and I've checked out the heads and they're in fabulous shape on this unit. So this is probably gonna be a good recorder. Is it going to be as good a recorder as the rest of my three headers? Probably not, because I've heard this bias control only works on normal bias tapes. Whatever. I don't know why Pioneer would do that, but apparently they did. But, uh, yeah. So, we shall get into this, and we'll talk about exactly what I did to diagnose this, and uh, what led me to uh, the part that's in this envelope here. So I've got the schematics right here. Now, what is actually happening when the uh, play mode bugs out on this unit? You'll remember that when we hit play, it fires the brake solenoid briefly and then doesn't actually do anything else. However, this thing does autoplay when you do the uh, this stuff over here. So what could be causing this to uh, autoplay and yet not normal play? Well, it took me the better part of a week to figure that one out. And I'm not, still not sure if I did totally figure it out, but uh, this is the control circuit right here. This is that entire control board. This is the chip here, and this is all the associated circuitry. Now, I didn't realize this at the time of filming my last video, but all this stuff over here, this is a uh, slack illumination circuit. The, the point of this is to run the reels backwards, this one right here, so that any slack is eliminated from the circuit before play, play, uh, sorry guys, before playback starts. You're gonna have to forgive me because I am running on very, very little sleep today, so I might not make too much sense. Anyhow, I initially thought that this circuit wasn't working and that was kind of confusing me for a bit, but after reviewing my video footage, it actually is working. It's just we're not getting enough uh, drive from the reel motor in order to get that to actually move the reels. So that's going to be an issue with the reel motor, most likely. But yeah, I was kind of expecting that anyway. But uh, what really happens to this unit when the playback mode fails like that is that you see this... Uh, Oh, where is it now? This VDD here, this is the power supply to the control chip. It runs at 5.3 volts. And let's see, where does it originate? It originates on pin 10 up here. I found that at pin 10, when you go to hit play on this thing or pause, 
because they both do the sort of the same thing on this unit. What happens is this voltage goes to nothing, zero. It completely bottoms out. So because that voltage goes to zero, playback never starts. And uh, figuring out why it was doing that, that was the pain in the butt, I'll tell you what. So, yeah, let's see here, where is it? This is the playback output here. Pin 15, you should get a voltage here as it goes into play mode, and it was never giving me that voltage, except if I was running autoplay, then it would give me that voltage. But uh, autoplay doesn't come off the same control section as uh, as normal play does. This is normal play over here, pin 4. It goes down to two pins here, 2-5 and 4. 2-5 goes to the front panel, that's this thing right here. Pin 4 goes up to the uh, indicator circuit board, that's this one up, that's behind up in here, which is responsible for all this stuff over here. Now, because it also comes up to this board, I thought initially that uh, something in this board might be having a, an issue there and causing the, uh, the 5.3 volt to drop out like that. But uh, after further examination of the circuit, I'm no longer certain at all that that's the case. In fact, I'm almost... Oh, come on, brain. I can't think today. I honestly can't. In fact, I'm pretty dead sure it's not the uh, the autoplay circuit anymore. But uh, yeah, we'll get into that too in a second. But yeah, this voltage goes bye-bye whenever you hit play or pause on this unit, but not when you do autoplay. So what could be causing that? Well, initially I thought, well, let's check the power supply. So I went back to the power supply, and I don't have the uh, the diagram for the power supply here, I don't think. I know I printed it, but uh, whether or not it's actually here or not... No, it's not here. Anyhow, I went back to the power supply, back to where that 5.3 volt rail originates, and I checked it there. It, it buggers out there too, so I knew the problem had to be someplace in the control circuit. So, but I just wasn't sure where, so... Uh, just to eliminate the power supply as being the cause of that, I recapped the, this uh, rail on the power supply. Changed basically nothing. So, let's go over to the, uh, to the indicator board here. These are the connections for the, for the uh, control circuit at the uh, indicator board here. You've got the play trigger. This is where pin 4 comes up. It ends up at pin 16 here. Auto rewind comes to uh, pin 12 here, and auto play comes to uh, pin 9 here. Or not 9, pin 11, sorry. Like I said, extremely tired. So, why don't I think this circuit is causing a problem? Well, it's because when auto, or when you, when you go to select normal play on here, and the circuit bottoms out like that, and that voltage rail bottoms out like that, if this circuit were causing a problem, you would think that uh, something on pin 16 on this board might be causing that. But when we look at pin 16, all it does is connect to two switches. That's all. If anything on this board were capable of shorting out that, uh, that playback circuit, it would have to be these two switches, and I just can't see that happening. Reason being is because it goes into autoplay. And, uh, oh, let's see, where does the autoplay connect again? Memory is gone today. This is where the autoplay comes in, at pin 11. We've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 diodes up here. And I initially thought that maybe those diodes might be causing a problem. Well, that's not possible. If those diodes were causing a problem, this thing wouldn't autoplay either, but it does autoplay. So, yeah, what is the problem? This right here. 
This is the only conclusion I can draw after doing all my checks and diagnostics. The TC9121P integrated circuit. Now, let's talk about this for a second. I hope to not waste too much of your time, but uh, it's kind of important to know exactly how this chip works and what it does. Okay, so here's pin 9, autoplay, and normal play is down here at 15. And pin 4 up here, that's where your, your play mode is selected. Now, what do these things do? Well, here's the block diagram of that IC. Kind of tough to print this out, but uh, I managed. Okay, so here's play here. This goes into uh, this multiple pressing detection circuit. Obviously, that's working, because if it wasn't working, fast forward and rewind wouldn't work either. And there's this prohibition thing here. So... Yeah, there's a simultaneous detection thing here as well, so we know the, the, the play issue is happening after this circuit here, so where could it be happening? Well, I'm actually not sure. The autoplay comes in down here, and it comes in through these mode select gates here, at least I think that's what they are. Then there's this gate circuit, and then the gate circuit controls stop, clock, play, and rewind, and somehow this circuit is able to engage playback all the way up through here. So, yes, the only thing I can think of is that something in this IC has failed and it's preventing us from going into normal playback. So, that leads us to this. This is a replacement TC9121P. And this was a Dickens to find. In this industry, there are actually quite a lot of counterfeits for chips like this. In fact, there were several of these available directly from China for maybe a couple of bucks each, but uh, from the listings, I didn't trust them at all because uh, half of them didn't even seem to know what this chip was supposed to do. But uh, this particular one cost me 35 bucks, came from England, so I'm hoping this one's trustworthy. We're going to find that out soon enough, but first, there is another diagnostic check I want to run before we get to that point. You see, I'm real nervous about this. Normally chips like that do not fail. And I want to know why that thing failed. My only thought is that this here real motor is drawing so much current that it completely destroyed that chip. So what I want to do first is I want to check to see if this is sitting at a dead spot right now and the belt is actually good. And what I want to do after that... Uh, it's not in a dead spot. The belt's gone. Okay. But what I want to do anyway is I want to check this circuit. I want to see exactly how much power this thing's drawing. Or how much current. Because... Uh, I'm reluctant to put a new chip in here without knowing exactly whether or not this thing's overloading the circuit, because, uh, yeah, I don't want to spend 35 bucks twice, if you know what I mean. If, things draw if this is drawing too much current, I'm going to leave it disconnected as we do our tests, and we'll just have to live without the real motor working. And in order to fool the deck into thinking that uh, there's actually a tape in it, we're actually going to use a uh, blank shell. This thing has no tape in it. The idea is I do not want this thing unspooling on me anything I have in here to test it with. So I'm just going to use that blank shell and we're going to, yeah, just basically do it that way. Now I said I recapped the power supply partly to uh, help diagnose this issue and you can see the parts right there. There's one capacitor there and there's this capacitor here. And that capacitor back there is originally intended for the console stereo, so I may have to order that one again. But uh, I'm just going to leave it in this machine, because why not? Alright, so how we're going to uh, test this, like I mentioned, we're going to use the blank shell. I'm going to desolder this pin, and we're going to wire my uh, meter in series here. 
and then I'm just going to fool it into auto playing until we can get an idea exactly what's going on with this. And we might have to do this a few times because there is no belt on that real drive anymore. It's going to keep shutting off on us. Alright, so I've got one lead disconnected from the motor, or from the circuit. I'm going to hook up my meter to the terminal it was plugged into. And I'm going to go with the 20 amp range on the meter just for now. I don't think it's going to be drawing that much current, but we'll just make sure here that we can see exactly what's going on. I saw a solder blob fall down in there. Just checking to be sure that's not shorting anything. And I should also mention that this board has been entirely recapped now, so the capacitors are not going to be a problem on that. You can see half these things are audio grade capacitors, but that's what I had available. So, let's see what we get. Okay, probably help if I got this thing on the right measurement here. All right, can you see that? I think so. The light may make a difference. Okay, let me see here. All right, we're gonna try now. Point zero three six amperes. Let me switch this over to the milliamp section and we'll go to a tighter range here. Yeah, we got 36 milliamps going on there, so that should be reasonable. But yeah, you can see the thing does go into playback when you use the autoplay. So, uh, yeah. I don't know exactly why this chip failed now then. Strange. Shouldn't be a problem with that little current draw, but uh, who knows. Alright, now... I guess the only thing left to do is for me to replace that chip and we'll see if we can get it to go into play mode properly. I'm going to shut off the camera for that because I want to take some new pictures so I can familiarize myself with which wires go where in here. Because I did have these transformer wires down here break off from flexing the board too much, so... Yeah, you gotta watch that with these things. Like I said in my Denon video last week, if you're not careful, these things will snap off especially on Pioneer stuff. So let me get to this and I'll get back with you in a minute. All right, so the new chip is in and soldered up, as you can see. Well, maybe you can't see, but uh, while I was working on it, I found another potential issue. This uh, component lead down here was almost shortened out on something it shouldn't have been. And when I straightened it out, I discovered that uh, the board trace that goes between that and uh, the transistor on the other side, I found that trace was damaged. So what I've done is I've uh, bent the component lead over to basically replace the trace. So I don't know if that was ever the issue or not. It could be something I did and it could be unrelated, I don't know. So yeah. It should be ready to go now, so how about I get this back in and we'll see if it works. All right, does it work now or are we gonna have to go further into the diagnostic arena with this thing? Before we find out for sure, I just wanted to let you all know I traced out where that damaged trace went and it went to Q518, which is this here. This is responsible for the real drive, so this was working. Therefore, this was damage I did while trying to straighten out that component lead, so that could not have been the problem with the play mode issue. 
but uh, let's see if this new chip works, shall we? Rather, let's plug the deck in and then see if it works. Like I said, extremely fatigued. All right. Moment of truth. Cross your fingers, your toes, but don't cross your eyes because then you can't see what's going on. Look at that. It's working. Fantastic. Okay, so we have a successful repair. So what's next for this? Well, obviously I'm going to have to order the belts and idler tire now. And then in the next video, you'll either see the transport being serviced or you'll see the real motor being rebuilt. I don't know which is which. I have to do both videos at the same time or shoot videos both at the same time. And then we'll find out. So yes, very pleased am I. There's no need to consign this deck to being a parts deck. It's going to work for us, I think. Now, I should mention that uh, the last time I did have this fired up, I tried to run a signal through it, and there's one channel missing from the record am amplifier, so we're going to have to diagnose that as well at some point along the way. But uh, maybe that'll be a separate video. Maybe it won't be. We'll see. Anyhow, we have a successful repair today, so I'm taking that for what it is and I'm just gonna go ahead and end this video and go take a nap. See you guys the next time. Take care.